I just got back from the store where I spent a lot of time playing in the bulk bins. So if you're ready for another great meal planning episode, stay tuned. <laughs> shopping list and all the recipes and some great tips and tricks so be sure that after watching this video that you click that link and get that um, document for yourself so you can kind of put it in your treasure chest of uh, cooking tools now this week I went to Sprouts and I spent a lot of time in the bulk bins and I actually love being able to do that because you don't necessarily always need a full package of something to make a recipe work. For example, at Sprouts and some of the other um, stores like that, you can get your spices in the exact measurement that you need. The benefit to this is that you get only what you need, you use it quickly, and rather than paying maybe double, triple, or quadruple the price of a full uh, spice container that maybe you don't necessarily use that spice that much, or you're not really sure if you like it, you can test it with these little things. You can get as much as like a quarter teaspoon or a half teaspoon or whatever the recipe calls for. You can get it in these little baggies and use them up and, you know, the, the uh, spices won't get stale and kind of lose their flavor as quickly. Now the other thing I love about Sprouts is their fruits and vegetable selection. You'll notice as you go through time and as you put more fruits and vegetables into your uh, shopping list that some stores um, will get better produce than the others. For example, this week at Sprouts, they had a great price on red bell peppers. And look at this, it's beautiful. In some of the other stores, um, you may pay, you know, the same or more, but the bell pepper actually might be a little bit smaller, or maybe it doesn't have the nice red color that this one does. So you'll just have to check your local store and decide, you know, depending on what you're making, which store offers the best fruits and vegetables for your family. Okay, so with that delay, we're going to go ahead and get starting cooking. And I have a few menus or a few uh, dinners that I'm going to pre-prep. So that way, once it comes time for serving them, you know, the, the lift, heavy lifting has already been done. And one of the things that I'm making a lot of is rice. And it's, I'm using brown rice, which takes longer to cook than your regular white, white rice. So I'm going to go ahead and start that now. I've got a rice cooker, which I love. Now, the other thing on the menu this week is a tri-tip. And because I need to marinate that and let it set for a while, I'm going to go ahead and do that first as well. So that can get marinating while I go ahead and chop up and prep some of the other ingredients. So stay tuned. I'll be back in just a minute. with the tri-tip towards the salsa. 
Now one thing that you're going to notice is that as you do this cooking and, and some of the recipes, you're going to find different sauces and uh, little added um, sauces like this that you'll find will taste great with a lot of different things. So feel free to explore a little bit and experiment taking stuff and putting it with other dishes. For example, one of the things I discovered is I made um, this brown rice pudding which actually gets a big thumbs up. This is actually very, very delicious. And I put them in these uh, four ounce mason jars. I have some in the fridge and there are also some in the freezer for that recipe. Now next time I make this recipe, I'm probably going to triple the amount of uh, pudding that I make because it's actually very easy but the simmering time does take a little bit of time. So if I can do it once, throw it in the freezer. You know, we can have it for quite a bit of time. But what's delicious about this is it has a ginger rhubarb topping that goes with it. And you only need a little bit of it to really add a nice punchy flavor to the rice pudding. So, for example, I had some left over and I'm freezing it because at some point I'm going to be able to use this on something else. So I'm very excited about that. The other thing is, as I was cooking... Um, I had quite a bit of parsley, and I had a little bit left over. Now, there's a couple ways that you can freeze herbs like your basils and your parsley and your oregano um, if you don't use the full bunch that you buy at the store for that particular cooking session. So this one, what it, I did is I put it in some olive oil and threw it in the freezer. So if I have to do, or if I'm going to do like a soup or some kind of stew, this is all ready for me to just dump it right into that soup mix. Now, the thing here is you do not want to use this if you want to have that spice for something that's, you know, fresh and crunchy. Because once you put it in the freezer, it's not going to be fresh and crunchy anymore. But it's great if you're going to put it into soups and casseroles. So keep that in mind. Okay, so the other thing I have here is we're going to do a goat cheese salad. So I have the beets here, which I've roasted, and they're marinating in their their dressing, which was homemade, plus I have the almonds to go on top of it. So once again, it's all labeled very clearly, so when we have that for dinner, it's all ready and easy to just grab out of the refrigerator and put it on the plate and voila, you got dinner. Now the other thing I have here is our pizza. So I have the dough, It's um, we actually put it in the freezer. It's already ready risen once, we punched it down, put it into a ball, so when we go to use this, all we need to do is defrost it, and then roll it out, and this will give us two nice pizzas. And I have the um, insides, or the toppings for those pizzas right here, so that is all ready to go as well. Another thing I have here, which I tried for the first time, are some veggie patties. And I have four in each one of these containers. So these could make a dinner, or they could also make a great um, lunch to bring to work with you. The thing that really made this special is the sauce. There's a, uh, a cilantro coconut sauce that goes on top of the patties. That really adds that special oomph to those patties. Um, I'm not a vegetarian, but I do eat a lot of non-meat foods. And so this one, it has the lentils in it, and it has a very good flavor. Um, but if you're not used to it, it might take one or two tries to get used to it. One of the things that uh, our meat eaters in the family said is if we go ahead and maybe add a little you know, ground pork or ground burger to this patty, it could actually be very good for your meat eaters in the family. And because there's so many vegetables in there and beans, you would only need a very, very small amount of um, ground meat to add to that. So, you know, for the whole recipe, you might only have to add like a half a pound in there just to give it that little bit of flavor that your meat eaters love. So I would definitely try that, but give the recipe as it is a try because you might be pleasantly surprised. And a tip for this one is I actually prepared the patties for this at the very last, um, as the last meal in my bulk cooking. Now what I found, the benefit for that is because it was a vegetable type patty, is I had little bits of like chopped leeks or chopped uh, parsley, um, I think I had some um, oregano, or, you know, different kinds of chopped vegetables that I didn't fully use and everything else. So I just threw them in the patties and added that extra vegetable to it. 
you can do that as well. So think about when you're doing your bulk cooking, if you have a lot of vegetables that you're using, let's say you're going to make a meatloaf, and you make that meatloaf at the very end of your bulk cush cooking session, then any of those kind of little leftovers, you can just throw it into the meat, form, the, form your, uh, your meatloaf or even your, um, your meatballs, and there you go. There's no waste, and you have some extra goodness in there with the extra color from your vegetables, um, adding nutrients to that lump of meat. And the final thing I have here is the uh, spinach lentil soup. Very good. So I have uh, one bit here that I'm putting in the freezer for later because the weather's still a little bit warm, so we're not quite quite ready for soup. But I do have a smaller container in the fridge that you know we can eat for um, for lunches just a little bit along the way. So there you have it. I have three main meals, plus I have a lot of extras that you, we can add in for lunches and snacks throughout the week. So remember to click on the link on this page and you get the full PDF report with your grocery shopping list and all the menus and also all the steps that I took and in which order I took them to get through the bulk uh, cooking session for this week. Thanks so much for stopping by and until next time, stay healthy and live